Greetings everyone, P. Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to pick number six of my top and favorite 31 hard rock and heavy metal albums of the 80s. We've been counting down each and every day all month long. We're almost done. Six more picks, well five after today. To finish out the month, we're going to work our way towards number one, which will be revealed on the 31st of May. Hope you've had your list all up to date. Hope you've been picking along with me each and every day. Today we're going to take a look at uh, a very cool album that I love a lot, obviously, because it's at number six. Uh, this is the eighth studio album from this particular band. It was released February 12, 1981, recorded at Le Studio in Morin Heights, Quebec, Canada, produced by Terry Brown for Anthem Records. Of course, I'm talking about moving pictures from Rush... You knew it was coming, right? Rush, one of those bands that uh, you know are going to transcend, not transcend, but they're going to infiltrate both of my monthly shows this month and next month because Rush kind of don't play fair with the rest of the world, right? Rush, they're a hard rock band. They've often been times called a heavy metal band. They're certainly a progressive rock band, right? They do a little bit of everything, so... You've already seen two Rush picks, picks from this month, right? Of course, I had uh, Permanent Waves a week or so ago. Now we got Moving Pictures. Will you see them next month in my favorite 70s prog albums? Uh, likely. Pretty likely. Anyway, uh, back to this album here. Of course, Giddy Lee on bass and vocals and keyboard synthesizers. Neil Peart on the drums. Writes most of the songs, lyrics, and things. Uh, and then, of course, you have Mr. Alex Lifeson on all sorts of guitars. All right. Classic album. Their big, big breakthrough album. They were successful before this, but this was the album that really put them into the big leagues. And it's, you know, not hard to see why with songs like Tom Sawyer, Red Barchetta, YYZ, Lime Night, Limelight. I remember back in the day when I got this album, I played side one of this album to death. And I think one of the reasons why Moving Pictures for me has still remained a very fresh listen all these years later is because I oftentimes ignored side two. Or maybe not ignored, maybe ignored isn't the right word, uh, but I didn't play that nearly as much. I still really like Camera Eye. I loved Witch Hunt. Witch Hunt ironically enough, was always one of my favorite songs on this album. It's dark and heavy, uh, but I completely ignored Vital Signs because back in the day I was kind of like, what's up with that kind of weird little reggae riff thing that Alex has going on and songs kind of light and, and never really dug it much. Newsflash, I love Vital Signs today. Really do. Great, great song. So now today, you know, a lot of times when I go to reach for this album, I'll go and I'll play the last three tracks more often than, than the first four, just because I've heard those for, you know, Tom Sawyer, Radio Staple. Nah, I still think Tom Sawyer is a pretty cool song, but it was never one of my favorites on the album. I don't really need to hear it again much, uh, but I get why everybody loves it. It is a great song. Red Barchetta is still amazing. YYZ or YYZ, if you're going to say it that way, uh, is a killer instrumental. Amazing. Just as draw, jaw, jaw dropping to listen to it today as it was back then. And I think Limelight is just a terrific song. Limelight is a great way to write a kind of, well, I wouldn't say Limelight is heavy, but it's pretty rocking. It's kind of proggy, and it's just really, really catchy. I mean, that riff is terrific. That guitar solo just slays me every time. And it's just, it's kind of a moody piece, right? It's just really, really great. Camera Eye is a great little mini epic. Love the synth work in that. Really, really cool song. Uh, and like I said, Witch Hunt is dark and menacing and heavy. Love it. And Vital Signs, just so upbeat and just kind of snappy and really dig it a lot. Really dig it a lot. All right, so uh, let's see. Let's um, move on to chart positions, right? So Canada, of course, no surprise. This was a number one album chart hit, right? Peaked at number one. The Dutch charts made it to number 19, Norway number 34, Sweden 32, the UK made it to number 3 in the UK and made it to number 3 on the US Billboard charts. Uh, they later on the reissue, this also, and this was the reissue last year, right? The nice cool double disc set which had the great live concert on it. Uh, Belgian charts number 67, 
Canadian album charts 19, Dutch album charts 46, German charts 22, Japan 41, Swiss album 72, U.S. top rock albums, Billboard top rock albums number one. Right, so even the reissue, all those years later, made a lot of headwaves. As far as certifications go, in Canada, this was four times platinum. Okay, in Canada, a platinum album sells 100,000 copies, so 400,000 copies. In the UK, silver, 60,000 copies. And in the U.S., it was just recertified. Right? If you watched the show Martin and I did last week, uh, we talked all about the RIAA and how certifications and recertifications work. So if someone, whether it's someone in the Rush camp or the record label or whoever, someone paid the RIAA to recertify this album to go and check those sales figures. So this was just recertified as five times platinum. Five million copies sold here in the U.S. And of course that takes into account also nowadays because you've got streaming and things like downloads and things like that. So uh, yeah, so a, a great album, a great Rush album, a, also kind of a transition album, right? Because this was um, the second album in the early 80s and alongside Permanent Waves Moving Pictures kind of moved the band into their next era, which we saw wholeheartedly with uh, Signals and Grace Under Pressure and all of a sudden you know you had these 80s albums that were sounding very different from the 70s albums but if you've read lots of interviews and things uh, that the band had done over the years especially back then uh, after they were done with like 2112 of Farewell the Kings and Hemispheres they were ready to move on to other things uh, I think which you know that's the one thing about Rush they always kind of had a next chapter in their music in their discography in their career and they were constantly trying to change things up a little bit so but yeah this landmark album I was already into Rush when I got this but this made me an enormous fan just moving pictures just seemed to kind of put it all together in a really really great way um not that hemispheres and albums before it weren't great because they are and were uh but there was something about this that just kind of uh, made it a little bit more accessible but it was still really really challenging music and production is just absolutely amazing on this album do need to say that terry brown and the band did a great job on this so uh, yeah that's my pick for today let us know what you think of moving pictures down in the comments below but more importantly your pick for today your pick number six, the top five, awaits us starting tomorrow. So tune in then and visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, all together, all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell so you get alert of all of our content as it posts. And please do hit the like button before you leave. We've also got the link down below to our um, Ko-Fi page for channel donations as well as our merch page where you can get this very cool Sea of Tranquility octopus or I like to call it the Kraken shirt. Uh, this and many, many others. We've got tons of designs. If you don't like t-shirts, we have uh, pullover hoodies. We've got zip-up hoodies. We've got hats and caps. We've got uh, coffee mugs and stickers and all sorts of fun stuff. So uh, check that out as well and uh, I thank you in advance for all that and we'll see you real soon here on the channel what do we got coming up so today busy day today we've got uh, of course Martin Pop Popoff and I will be entering <clears throat> excuse me the fun house in just a little bit so stay tuned for that we've got a uh, fun show planned for you talking about <clears throat> certain musical genres and are they perfect <clears throat> and maybe in our mind they are, but maybe they're not, right? So the whole idea of perfect music, what may, what is perfect music? Uh, I'm also going to be talking to the two main guys from Planet X, Derek Sherinian and Virgil Donati. They've got a very cool anthology box set coming out that kind of encapsulates all of the Planet X music. So I'll be talking to them about that, about the band and is there a future for Planet X and all that good stuff. So that's coming up as well. We've got this weekend, we've got The Curse of the Collector. We've got uh, ranking the albums. I'll be ranking the catalog of Blondie, Debbie, Harry, and Blondie. We've got that coming up and uh, all sorts of other stuff happening over the next couple of days. And it's a holiday weekend here in the U.S., so everybody enjoy your Memorial Day weekend. Uh, remember to give some thoughts where they need to go, and uh, we'll see you here with more stuff on the Mighty Sea. Till then, I am Pete Pardo. Have a good one, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.